So, have you heard enough about the fair criticism? Tim Burke is back with Think and Grow Rich, and I know I wrapped up the last video and we were hammering away on how detrimental this thing called the fair criticism really is to you and I. Why is it that we live our lives worrying about what somebody else thinks? Here is something that my first mentor taught me with, the, the guy who told me to get a copy of this book and study every day for the rest of my life. He said, why would you care what someone else thinks when they don't know how to? That's a fair question, ladies and gentlemen. Why would we care what somebody else thinks when they don't know how to? Why is it that their opinion of us is so important to us? Make sure you get that right, especially when you want to step out and take a risk and start your own business or whatever it may be that may not be in conformity with what everybody else thinks it should be. Now, if that didn't confuse you, nothing will. So we don't need to get all caught up in this thing called the fear of criticism. What we want to do is be aware of it so we can put it behind us and not live our lives from it. Now, I want you to think about something. When Andrew Carnegie suggested that Napoleon Hill devote 20 years to the organization of the philosophy of achievement, Oh, by the way, he was not going to pay him for this either. There was no material compensation involved in this. He would give him a letter of introduction to very wealthy people, and he would interview them and organize the philosophy of success. Now think for a moment what you would do if somebody asked you to work for the next 20 years to interview the wealthiest of the wealthy so you could find the common thread and then put together the organization of the philosophy of success. And it wouldn't be until at least 20 years down the road that you would even begin to gain a profit from what you had done. I don't know about you. I don't believe I would have done that. I don't believe in any way, shape or form. I'd have said, oh, good gosh, yes. I'm enthused about working the next 20 years and not being paid for it. Think about this. He said all at once, the suggestion set up a goal for far out of proportion. He says, as quick as a flash, my mind began to create alibis and excuses, all of them traceable to the inherent fear of criticism. He says something inside of me said, you can't do it. The job is too big, requires too much time. What will your relatives think of you? How will you earn a living? No one has ever organized a philosophy of success. What right have you to think that you can do it? Who are you anyway to aim so high? Remember your humble birth. What do you know about philosophy anyway? People will think you're crazy. Oh, and they did. Why hasn't some other person done this before now? Napoleon says, these and many other questions flashed into my mind and demanded attention. It seemed as if the whole world had suddenly turned its attention to me, Napoleon, with the purpose of ridiculing me into giving up all desire to carry out Carnegie's suggestion. Huh, everything was... He says, I had a fine opportunity then and there to kill off ambition before it gained control of me. He says, later in life, having analyzed thousands of people, he discovered this. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention to this. He says, most ideas are stillborn and need the breath of life injected into them through definite plans of immediate action. See, if you have an idea and you have put together, you put together a definite plan of immediate action and then you begin to take intelligent action and you keep your mind on the intelligent action, you keep your mind on the plan, you keep your mind on that coveted goal, whatever it may be, your mind doesn't have any room for the fear of criticism. It's not there. He also talks about how many people believe that material success is the result of favorable breaks. He said it was a nice break for him to get a chance to interview Mr. Carnegie, which gave him the opportunity to then work for 20 years without pay. He calls that a favorable break. I would say it became a major break in his life. However, he had to work for 20 years. He had to put in the time, the effort, the energy. Hmm. He talks about many other people during that era that, you know, if you were around that era, you would easily recognize how these people didn't sit around and wait for a favorable break. Now you can fast forward to today's world and you can talk about 
uh, Barbara Corcoran, and you could talk about Damon John, you could talk about Kevin Harrington, or Jeff Bezos, or, good gosh, you could go on and on and on. These people are not sitting around waiting for favorable breaks. They're creating their own breaks. And they absolutely recognize opportunity. He says, examine the first hundred people you meet, ask them what they want most in life, and 98 of them will not be able to tell you. Um, does that take us back to the six steps in, chap in the chapter on desire? I think it takes us back there very nicely. Make sure you understand and, and how critically important it is for you to know what it is that you want. Remember, the starting point of all achievement is desire. Persistence is the sustained effort necessary to induce faith. Induce faith in what? Induce faith in yourself so you can attain that which you desire. It's pretty simple stuff, really. It's not hard. Develop persistence. Now, he's going to talk about that. How do we develop persistence? He says there are four simple steps which lead to the habit of persistence. They call for no great amount of intelligence. I was relieved when I read that. No particular amount of education. I was extremely relieved when I read that one. And but little time or effort. The necessary steps are, number one, a definite purpose backed by burning desire for its fulfillment. Do you have a definite major purpose? Now I can also tell you this, just because you have a definite major purpose does not mean that you're going to accumulate material riches. Think about it for a minute. Um, this gentleman named Mahatma Gandhi had a definite major purpose to f for freedom. He didn't have any material riches. Hmm. Hmm. Think about that. A definite purpose backed by burning desire for its fulfillment. These are the simple steps that lead to persistence. Number two, a definite plan expressed in continuous action. In other words, you're doing something intelligent each and every day towards what I would call your definite chief aim. More on that in a second. Number three, a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences. A mind closed tightly. He says, including negative influences of relatives, friends, and acquaintances. Why would he take the time to write that? Because that's where the majority of the influences come from, and they are the majority of the time negative. Oh, you're not gonna pull over. What, what are you even trying to do that for, silly boy? Number four, a friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage one to follow through with both plan and purpose. That's your mastermind. The power of the mastermind. We'll do that in the next chapter. How important it is to surround yourself with people who encourage, inspire, and uplift you even when you don't feel like it. He says this. This is very important. And I actually have this all typed out right there and right in front of me. This is my desk area. So I look this way, I see it. I look straight ahead, I see it. These four steps are essential for success in all walks of life. The entire purpose of the 13 principles of this philosophy is to enable one to take these four steps as a matter of habit. Create this into a habit. Do it so long consciously that it becomes a habit. It becomes second nature. He says these are the steps by which one may control one's economic destiny. They are the steps that lead to freedom and independence of thought. They are the steps that lead to riches in small or great quantities. They lead the way to power, fame, and worldly recognition. They are the four steps which guarantee favorable breaks. They are the steps that convert dreams into physical realities. They lead also to the mastery of fear, discouragement, and difference. He says there is a magnificent reward for all who learn to take these four steps. It is the privilege of writing one's own ticket and of making life yield whatever price is asked. So what price are you asking of life? That would be my first question. And number two, are you following this? Because these four steps guarantee this if we develop the habit. The habit. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the key to persistence. Is it a habit? Are you persistently applying the six steps out of a matter of habit? 
or you're persistently applying these principles out of a matter of habit. So make sure you read the rest of this chapter. Read this story. It's about Miss Wallace Simpson and the love of her life. And it's a fantastic story that everybody should read. No question about it. So ladies and gentlemen, please remember, persistence is profitable, stubborn is stupid. And think about a time when maybe you have been stubborn in your life. And if you wouldn't have been stubborn, how much more profitable it may have been. Some of you have been stubborn in your business dealings and it's cost you. It's cost you time, it's cost you energy, it's cost you financial resources, it may have cost you friendships, and it was all because of being stubborn. Don't allow digging our heels in and making sure that we're right lead us. That's not the way we want to go. Persistently apply these principles. That's what this chapter is all about. Persistence is profitable, stubborn is stupid. Joe, thank you so much for all that you do, my friend. Without Joe, we wouldn't be here, ladies and gentlemen, so please make sure you say thank you to Joe. As always, one of our strongest desires is that this day be the very best day you've ever experienced in this game we call life. Yesterday's already gone, tomorrow doesn't matter, but today does. What will you do with this day to allow it to be the best day in your life? Tonight, when you put your head on a pillow, please do so with a mindful of peace. Remember, calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. And may God bless each and every one of you. Have a fabulous day today.